Back to the hideaway. Thankfully, I think I, I know this game well enough that hopefully we'll slow down. Because that last bit was so much. Out of the shadow. <sighs> I'd better give Otto the good news. I was about to say, I love how they bring this down for me. They're like, boss is here! And then down it went. That was... I don't know. I don't know why that amused me so much. We're seeing troops amassing at every border crossing. Surprise is there. It was the same after Drake's breath. Clive, you're back. I am. And with glad tidings for once. Hugo Kupka is no more. Well, I'll be. All of our comrades who lost their lives back at Sid's place. Smiling down at you right now. We had a stolas from Lubor saying Drake's fang had fallen. I expect that was your doing as well, was it? It's it's a long story. <laughs> One for the history books, I'll bet. Welcome home, Clive. It's good to be back. You look better. I feel it. Which means I'm coming on your next little adventure. You're not leaving me behind again. Wouldn't dream of it. Otto. Any uh, word on the royalist movements since I've been away? Shouldn't you be putting your feet up? <sighs> if you really want to know, go and have a word with Vivian. Thank you. I will. Gonna have a whole once over this damn place. There's a lot of stuff going on. More importantly, who is that woman up there in love with now? Is it Jill? Just putting it out there. Ah, the conquering hero returns. And with hardly a scratch on him. I may have picked up one or two. Well, the fact that you came straight to me instead of visiting our resident physica suggests that you picked up something more important. A scent. The scent of Waluda's. The very same. But whatever plans Kupka was hatching with the royalists, he took them to his grave, as did his men, slaughtered by the orcs who'd taken over the fang. Orcs, Vivian. I've never seen such creatures in storm before. The Waluders must have ferried them over from Ash, but why? Why work to rescue Kupka only to invade his home, the mother crystal of an allied nation, and let both fall? It makes no sense. Do you know the tale of the blind men and the Adamantus? <laughs> One no. can often be led astray by focusing too closely on individual details. One must instead see the bigger picture. And what bigger picture is there than my map? The kingdom of Walud claims dominion over all of Ash. It is a nation forged by the bloody conquest of Barnabas Tharm, the dominant of Odin, the Canvarian War of Independence in 849, the Battle of the Twin Realms in 865, the Battle of Belinus Tor in 873. Wheresoever his armies fought, Odin was found where the fighting was fiercest. But of late, the warrior king appears to have laid his sword to rest. Battle rages for control of the crystalline dominion. Yet Tharm sends not a single ship in support of his Dalmechian allies. Meanwhile, the Blight ravages great swathes of ash. 
yet warlike Walud shows not the faintest interest in laying claim to untouched lands. So why go to the trouble of sending an army of orcs into the heart of Drake's Fang? Only to make no attempt to claim the Mother Crystal for Walud. It can hardly be for lack of men. Tharm's armies rival any in the Twins. No. We have not seen the last of the Waluda standard. Odin will ride again. It is but a question of when. And on that day, who will be trampled underfoot? In summary, I know not to what end the Royalist betrayed Kukka. I know only that it is part of some broader scheme. A scheme tied to the ambitions of one man. King Barnabas. But there is no need to wallow in confusion. If one is to cure a sickness, one must first identify the symptoms. And your Lord Uncle has volunteered to do just that by keeping an eye on the Royalists' movements. <laughs> He's really throwing himself into this. <laughs> Indeed he is. Which means all that remains for us to do is await his reports. Well, not quite all in your case. The people of the hideaway must hear the news. Justice has been done. Hugo Kupka is dead. The wounds he left that night are still raw. Especially for those who lived with Sid the longest. Tell them that those wounds might finally begin to heal. Consider it the price of today's instruction. I've never known you to be sentimental. <laughs> what can I say? I am only human. And we are, all of us, sentimental animals at heart. I suppose we are. Very well. I'll go and spread the word. Cool. I was gonna re-expound upon my theory from last time, but, uh... Go back, watch the last, I don't know, 10 minutes of the previous video. If you want to know my Jesse Cox theory of everything for this game. But I think I got it figured out. I think I know what Barnabas' plan is. And how he is in league with Ultima. Right? And, and Annabella as well. I think I got them all cross-sectioned. We'll see. Ah, my favorite pupil. Kupka and the Fang were the bedrock upon which the Republic stood. Now that both have crumbled, Dalmechia's descent into chaos is all but assured. So what of its parliament? You ask. Will the ministers not take it upon themselves to pick up the pieces of their crumbling nation? I doubt it. They have little love for their people, only their own preservation. Which leaves but one man. Standing between Dalmechia and disaster, former Field Marshal Eugene Havel. If any is to pick up the baton of command, Maybe it's Eugen. Whatever. It shall surely be he. <sighs> but as the bitter tides of ire and avarice rise around him, how long will he be able to keep his head above water, I wonder? How may I help you today? I have the details here. Okay. Right. So, this boy is now Emperor. And my boy Dion, uh, he's going to be on our team. 100%. I believe this. 100%. The real mystery, the one thing about all of this I don't understand. Right here. Medicine girl. She keeps popping up. What? I don't. She's got to be something. This has got to lead to something. One must understand one's place in the world. Right. All right, we return back here. This is still a thing. Although, you know, the armistice, and we're waiting to see what the hell these guys are going to do. Very good. All right. Real quick. They want me to go over here, see all this, but uh, let me... That bastard shadow loomed over us all for far too long. Thanks for snuffing him out, Clive. Oh, 
Oh, you want to look at the hunt board? Okay. Whew. Okay, we got... We got soul stingers. That's ten. It's like, whoa, the nine of knives. And then the breaker of worlds. Okay. Fallen giant. The Rosarian ruins we have... Oh, no. Is that going to be a, uh, like, legit... Some sort of iron giant kind of guy? Or... I don't know. You couldn't see me. I was doing this. I don't know why. I am a robot. Um. All right. I'll keep a lookout. Also, more importantly, I don't know why I'm so invested in this one woman's journey. Yes, ma'am. Oh, yeah. She got rid of the backpack. When it comes to boyish charm, Goots has an indomitable rival in Gal. Ugh. One is the sweet little babe in arms to be cooed over. The other, the naughty little boy who pull on my pigtails. <laughs> oh, Lord. I know what you're going to tell me. Thank you, Clive. Thank you. Gav told me the gentleman who visited earlier, the one with the loud voice, was your uncle. I did think there was a resemblance. Something in the eyes. Oh, Jill? It's good to have you back. I was worried. Oh no. A sun hath topped the mountain. A dawn hath kissed the sky. Bid welcome to the morning and fears of night. Wow. <laughs> I love this dish. dish. I love gagging on this dish. It's the most gagtacular dish I've ever gagged on. Ah, Clive. Have you come seeking the gift of knowledge? No. To share mine, actually. Hugo Cooker is dead. He... Oh my. Can it really be true? <laughs> Look, he's crying. <laughs> he is. <laughs> Big baby. <laughs> and with good reason, children. These are tears of joy. We must offer up a prayer to your parents that the heavens might weep with us. There shall be no lessons today, only thanksgiving and merrymaking. Go, put away your things. All right. Brilliant. Finally, a new dawn has broken. It has. Thank you, Clive. I cannot wait to share the good news. Hippocrates. After Kuka fell... Ultima came to me. I need to know what he is. Have you learned anything? Alas, no. And not for want of trying. I have scoured nigh every historical tome in our collection and found nothing. Not even the sort of conspicuous absence that might suggest a concealment of fact. One is almost tempted to conclude that such a creature never existed. But I saw him with my own eyes. I don't doubt that you did. Alas, it seems you are the only one who has. 
To others, he reveals naught. We see only that which he leaves in his wake, like some terrible force of nature beyond the ken of mortal man. A brother of death. Whether the Ultima you met with was the being itself, or merely another projection of its power, I know not. Hmm. But until I do, my investigations shall continue. Thank you. It means a lot. Still a mystery, huh? Okay. But... How good it is to see you, Clive. It's no mystery that I'm gonna level up, right? I have a few right? notes that might Tomes? interest you. Uh, what subject shall we consider today? Okay. We're close. The door to the shadows shall ever be open. My knowledge is yours. I have said it many times. Hugo Kuka was a murderer, but he was also a thief. A thief who robbed us of our happiness, of our hope. And though I know it is wrong to revel in the death of another, we can take solace in the fact that he will never steal anything from us ever again. His story is ended. Thank you, Clive. Were you aware that in many cities, bearers are forbidden from having children? It is believed that the ether used to bring a child into the world hastens the crystal's curse, lessening the mother's productivity. Such is the world we live in. Fortunately, Ted and Crow's parents were able to escape that world, if only for a few brief summers. But what of the twins themselves? Born in the hideaway, one touched by magic, the other spared its burden. Their minds are blissfully untainted by the poisonous rhetoric of priests and politicians. They will grow up knowing there is no difference between man and bearer, and they will pass that truth on to their own children, and they to theirs, until the world we live in is now but a footnote in the annals of history. Yes, change will come. And through a magic which requires no crystal to conjure, one that will endure long after the last mother crystal has fallen. It's almost like there's some sort of message in this game, like a moral of some sort. I just can't Cooker figure out no what it is. I must spread these glad tidings throughout the hideaway. But fear not. Once the news has been shared, I shall, of course, resume my investigations into Ultima right away. Thanks to Sid, the man who hurt your mother and father is gone. I'm sure they're looking down on us now and smiling. I'm smiling too! Yeah, me too. Thanks, Sid. Not bad for a boy from the Imperial Barracks, eh? Torgol. So. Welcome home, Clive. I was hoping you'd be back soon. Well, someone looks pleased with himself. <laughs> it's true what I'm hearing, then. Nothing escapes you, Lady Karen. It's true. Kuka is dead. Hmm. No more looking over our shoulders, then. Good. I'm starting to get a crick in my neck. Don't let it go to your head, though. I love her. Always and have. What can I do for you? Always will. It's a relief. Feels like we can finally breathe again. No more living in fear. Thank you, Clive. I know I don't say it often, but I mean it. Oh, and best of luck, too. For many here, every other worldly woe paled in comparison to the threat of Hugo Kuka. Now he's gone. We'll finally have time to devote to everyday gripes and grumbles. And as the captain of this little ship, I'm sure you'll be on the receiving end of more than a few. Yup. Yep. Do you have a what's going on with you? Be quick about it. Enhancer, huh? All right, we're already doing better. 
Yeah, no. Wow. No, I'm all right. Uh, don't need that. Don't need that. Don't need any of that. Come again. Thank oh, you. Don't. But also, I'm the dad away. <laughs> while we're here, I made a promise to myself. Back, Sid. If we're celebrating, we're celebrating. Ten thousand. Let's go. That's what we like to hear. Knock them back, everyone. Sid's buying. Yeah! Hey, we're getting swasted tonight. Let's go. Oh, you're not leaving already, are you? This, uh, this has to be an achievement of some sort. I'm not sure what the amount is, but I feel like this is one of those money sinks. You know what I mean? I'll be back. I'm gonna, I'm gonna save just in case. Uh oh. Hello. If the state of our coffers is anything to go by, I'd say we found ourselves a wealthy patron or two. I wonder who it could be. It's my uncle. He's pretty cool. Oh my god, that boy found another bird. Stop. What do I have to eat to grow as tall as you, Mr. Stelts? Blackthorn, do you have a moment? What is it? I'm busy. I wanted to tell you that Hugo Cooker is dead. <sighs> I can't tell you how long I've been waiting to hear those words. <laughs> this is it then. Uh, a new beginning under a new Sid. I'll try to live up to the name. Right. Let's see if Otto has anything else for me. Hold on, mister. Hold on. I feel ya. To a bloody riddance. If there was ever a man who deserved a rusty knife in the gut, it was that prick. Not that I'd let you carry around a rusty knife. His death won't bring back the people we lost, but it'll ease a few hearts. Not included. Thank you. What's going on with this forge, man? Fort India. Okay, enhancer one. Already better than where we were. A. These are whatever, but enhancer one. What is enhancer two? Do I? Can I see that? Where you are. Oh, yeah. You, I mean, we got to get on that train. Okay. Real quick. What is the Enhancer 1? So that's 2. 132, 43. Might as well just do this instead of buy it. I'll be spending my money on drinks. Should last you a good while. Okay, then we'll come here and we'll do this. Yeah, that should do you. Anything else? Ooh, we got a curve in our sword. Hell yes. All right. He cracked the crystal too. You joking? Nah, nah, nah. I'd be doing that all the time. Sid the Second. I trust you forgive me for putting you and your dear uncle to the test. I am confident that a man of your position can understand the importance of earning one's trust, especially in times like these. For what it's worth, you now have earned mine and... I can assure you, it shall not easily be relinquished. May this be the start of a fruitful friendship. And this is 
gonna be the dungeon I just did, in theory. Yup, one hundo. There we go. Drake's Fang, that was a cool ass dungeon. I wonder if you do that, it makes you do the entire, like I have to fight Titan at the end. I don't know. You barely sat down since you came home. Vivian got you running errands or something? Yes. Just spreading the word. So, the professor's got a soft side, has she? I'd never have guessed. No. She was right, though. Everyone was glad to hear the news. Ah, oh, but you ain't told everyone. I can think of plenty of friends back at the old hideaway who'd sleep more peacefully for knowing. Not least of all Sid. You should tell him. <laughs> You're right. I should. And I will. Well, when you do, be sure to take Mid with you. She's been going at it hammer and tongs down at that workshop of hers, trying to do her father proud. But I can't remember the last time she visited the old Salt's grave. Very well. I'll suggest it. We're seeing troops amassing at every Took just about the longest way to get there. It's all right. I'll get there. That's the wrong damn direction. Editors started reading books that don't have any pictures in. Why would anyone want to do that? I have done it, Sid. I have learned all the letters, every one. <laughs> On a lack livid, a queen and goblins three, but heed not did the goblins their queen, and so, full of wrath, did she banish them to shore where they sooped on mud till their lips turned black and they begged to return, and good of heart, the queen, she did take them back. I mean, that is a story. I knew it was a good idea to have editors study alongside the children. It's really stoked their competitive spirit. I think Mid might need some help tidying up that workshop. Me. If I don't come up with something soon. All right, Clive? What do you want? I'm going to visit Sid, and I thought you might like to come with me. Sorry, I'm too busy for all that right now. I've got to get this thermal displacement stack sorted. Thermal... <laughs> Displacement stack. Here. And uh, this is for... Only the fastest, finest ship the world has ever seen. The Enterprise. Me and my dad designed it together. Where other vessels rely on the fickle winds to drive them through the water, ours is fitted with mithril engines. And those things have got more push than a behemoth in a bad mood. And more heat than all the hells put together. Which is where the stack comes in. I may have already talked some tight-lipped ship rides into putting the hull together for me in a little dockyard in Canva. But the stack's a bit more involved, so I'm building it here. Thing is, it's so involved that I'm running behind and it's starting to hold things up over at the shipyard. I'll come and see my dad, though, when I'm done. Whenever that is. Is there anything I can do to help? <laughs> Good old Clive. 
I were hoping you'd say that. Well, of course I would. First things first, I need some parts making. Of course you do. The sack will be made up of three major components. There's the plate in here that channels hot vapors away from the engine. The helm over the top that disperses all that heat into the air. And the shielding around the sides that stops the rest of the ship from going up in flames. A full suit of armor then. Probably best to take it one piece at a time. Then you'll need to start with the plating. Everything else fits onto it. I've got the designs and the list of materials here. Show these to Blackthorn. He'll know what to do. I can't make it not tell them. Luckily, you don't need to. The engine plating's basically just a very efficient conductor. Create a thermal gradient across it and the heat radiates outwards, which... You know what, just... Show the plans to Blackthorn. He'll know what to do. Okay. <laughs> I unabashedly love that woman right there. I, she might be my favorite NPC in this entire game. Ooh, we got quests all over the world now too, huh? See a look at the list, do you? Oh boy, yeah. Also, it was luck and luck alone. It sold me safely out of the hideaway last night, or uh, that night. <laughs> so many others didn't make it. I see them, you know, in my dreams sometimes. Always tell them I'm sorry that I wasn't able to save them. For now, I can tell them something different. That Kupka's dead, that you avenged them. And I know what they'll say back to me, so let me say it for them. Thank you, Clive. Quick look. For great justice. Use your loaf. Uh-huh. Okay. For great justice. Yeah, let's go to Quentin. I'm gonna just get these out of the way. Good day to you. And a fine day to you. Uh oh, are they still on this gossip train? <sighs> the crystals we get from the tail are all but worthless. It's not just the crystals. Bearers are having trouble with their magics as well. Not really gossip, that's just news. Ladies, let's spice it up. Come on. Good to see you, Sid, as always. Uh, Master Quinton's out back. Hello, Sid. Ah, Clive. Your timing is exquisite, as always. I have a concern which you may be able to assist me with. Go on. There are whisperings afoot of shadowy figures having been sighted outside the village. Rustlings in the undergrowth, suspicious noises. My people fear that they are being watched. It may be no more than a surfeit of nerves, understandable in the current climate, or it may be the prelude to something altogether more dangerous. Given what I hope you'll forgive me calling your nose for trouble, I wondered if you might investigate. Of course. Excellent. You might begin by speaking with the good citizens of Lostwing. Listen to their tales, and make what you will of them. All right. I will. Right. Let's see what the people of the village have to say. I'd better find out if this is just nerves. Or something we need to take more seriously. You all right, Sid? Something on your mind? There is, actually. Can I ask you something? Quentin tells me people have mentioned shadowy figures out in the woods. Have you noticed anything unusual? Oh, that. No, sorry, can't help you. 
I heard the rumors, mind, from the lads working over at the vineyard, but none of them has seen anything either. All right. Thanks anyway. So it's not the vineyard direction? Is that one supposed to pick up from that? Like, people hear the rumors, but it's not that direction. So it's in one of the two other adjoining areas. Oh, the crystals we get from the tailor will... Have a moment. There's talk of suspicious figures in the woods. Have you seen anything out of the ordinary? No, but I've heard something. Sound of scraping metal, like someone sharpening a sword. Where was this? In Lorbert's Pass. Was out foraging for herbs when I heard it, screeching out from between the trees. Hmm. Ran back here as quick as my legs would carry me. And I ain't been back since. I see. I'll look into it. Thank you. I love the name Herb Mother or Herb Mother. Seems Lorbert's pass is our best bet then. What do you say, Toggle? Shall we go and investigate? Oh, they literally are just like you did. You did. You did more than enough. Okay, cool. Unless that's the title, Herb Mother, which is a great title too. But I, I'd like if it was just like Jane Herb Mother. You know, like Phil Davidson. But her mother. That's so funny. What the hell are you doing here? What is it to you? Not that we give a damn. All that matters to us is that you don't be here alive. this. <laughs> Goodbye, nerds. It's the cruelest, meanest thing. <laughs> that man just fell from the sky. Hilarious. That guy wasn't even. What the? My man. Problem solved. Why were they here? They planning an attack on Lost Wing. I need to warn Quentin. Yeah, I mean, probably, yes. Oh, we're going the wrong way, but that's fine, because I can just do this. <laughs> that was so mean. They're just flying around, and I'm like, pew, to you. pew, pew. And absolutely, my Clive goes pew pew pew. Sir, if Tim, Clive, how goes the hunt for our sinister figures? I found some black shields hiding near Lorbert's Pass. They're gone now. Black shields, the Empress's former bloodhounds, though they serve another master now. One who means to root out and destroy both me and those I care for. 
And it would appear the pack has finally caught the scent of its prey. Damn it all. I had hoped I would have more time than this. More time to prepare. But if we are cornered, we have no choice but to bite back. And bite back we shall. I'm sorry. You're going to need to explain. Who did the Black Shield serve now? And why would that person want you dead? Because I want him dead. Who? The former Lord Chief Justice of Sanbrac. All that I have built here is for him. I don't understand. Why him? Why Lostwing? I suppose it is better that you know the truth. I was a member of the judiciary once. So sickened was I by the injustice of this world, I swore to fight it. And fight it I did in my own small way. I saw more than a few corrupt officials condemned to the very cells into which they had thrown blameless innocence. Men to whom the law was but a scourge to turn against the powerless. And throughout, it was the Lord Chief Justice who backed me, who was my one true ally in the quest to see justice done. So what changed? I discovered that he hunted bearers for sport. I was a fool to think he shared my hatred of venality and vice. His support for me was no more than a facade, a means of ridding himself of his rivals, a mask to hide the rot beneath. I filed suit against him immediately. His response, however, was rather more visceral. He had my entire family slaughtered, and he faced no punishment whatsoever. I lost everything. My loved ones, my livelihood, my position, the faith I had once held that any modicum of justice might be achieved through the courts. So I set about enacting my own. I tracked down every soul who served him and slit their throats myself. Okay. But the man himself proved an altogether more difficult target. With money and power come protection. And so I saw that I would need an army of my own. I came here to Lostwing and began recruiting like-minded individuals. And... Everyone here knows this is why you do what you do. Of course. They too have lost loved ones to the bearer hunts. Seen faultless friends sent to the gallows to spare the guilty. All under the watchful eye of the Lord Chief Justice. Our wounds are the same. And our cause is the same. We are comrades. And our revenge is already in motion. We know where he hides, how numerous and well-trained his guard. What we did not know until now, however, was that his plans may already be in motion too. Quinton. Our time is short. He may move against us at any moment, unless we move against him first. My friends and comrades, it begins. Make ready for war. Unexpected. Is that <laughs> quest complete? I guess they're doing their own thing now. Holy shit. This was for great justice. Is there more to this or is he I'm not going to change his mind? Are they are they doing this now? Oh wow. Okay. Although now part of me wishes I had just walked around town to see them in their war footing. I can just go back. Kind of want to know what that's lost. Wing. What? <laughs> this is how you know I got a mile a minute stuff happening in my brain. <laughs> I just combined two thoughts. I'll be taking you all to a storehouse in the bales. Leave anything you don't need behind. This is really happening. Wow. Okay. You 
know what you have to do. A well that his down. lordship's vultures should be found circling the village can mean only one thing. That he means to strike at us before we can strike at him. There is no time to lose. The final stage of our plan must be put into motion. Yo, this is wild. If you're ready, we leave at once. Come, my children, the reckoning is nigh. I didn't think the entire town was just like ready to throw down. Holy shit, this is great. I love this. This is just from a side quest. If you didn't do this, you wouldn't even know. I know you're all afraid, but now is not the time for shilly shallying. We've planned long and hard for this. Now is not the time for shilly shallying. That is. A battle cry. I figured I'd look around. All right, anyway. Damn. gotta be a, a future quest right or are they just gonna do their thing and i get to see the aftermath i don't know i don't know but like that's cool as shit the finest fabric. the most fragrant herbs and spices from them gone just like that and without so much as a buy your leave what's the matter uh, oh it, it's my apprentice he up and vanished while my back was turned. I'd go and look for him myself, but I've got a bakery to run. A bakery that's now short, one pair of hands. Once you go flat. Loathe though I am to rely on the kindness of strangers, I'm at a loss. Please, will you see if you can find him? You probably want to go look for the rest of that saying, because I don't think anyone knows what it is. I'll see what I can do. Do you know where he might have gone? Ah. Uh. I wouldn't be surprised if he was off somewhere mooning at Drake's Fang. He used to work there, you see. Oh, Poor oh, fool left okay. his heart in its hollow. All right. And that's where I'll start. I thought that man was like showing his ass to Drake's Fang. By the way, I've noticed these in the background of a yes, lot of stalls, and I just want to say. Lord Kupka has several similar pieces in the his like collection. quality of those beads is out of control. I love the design of those. Oh, oh, this guy running back again. Where did all the men of the rock go? Probably ran out of gill, just like us. Damn girls, hard time for all of us. Oh, I forgot this was the song for this area. This, this is, I love this song. Ambrosia. Ready, go. Uh oh, is this just one lone guy? Oh, it's the assassin. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh shit, it's this guy. Right, this is the dude I need to hunt. Yep. Here we go. My blade yet hungers, and so do I. Come, let us feast on your flesh. No, 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 you aren't gonna spit on me. Your feasting days are over. Once more! <laughs> Kiss my whole butt. Yeah. 
can't dodge it! Oh my god! I needed that. This stuff you like a twig! You leave my dog alone! What the shit, this guy? There we go. Oh, how I hate this. Oh, how I hate you. Oh, how I hate you. Oh, so that didn't do what I wanted. This, that spit, I, oh my god, this guy. Oh my god, this guy. No spit, no spit, no spit! I couldn't even parry it. Wasted my entire thing there. Uh, this guy. He is level 38. That would explain a lot. That's ready. And undermine. Sloppy? Sloppy. But you know what? Level up. I'll take it. 5,000 experience. Mamma mia. Those who kill for sport deserve no better. Okay, well. <laughs> That's one down. I have a feeling instead of, like, actively hunting the hunts, I'll probably just stumble across a lot of them doing side quests and whatever, so. I am surprisingly not too stressed, although this was not the direction at all. Oh, no it is. He's up here. Excuse me. What do you want? The baker sent me to find you. I am a sorry, selfish sod, aren't I? I'm certainly not a baker. Master must have ruled the day he took me in. Time was the sight of the fang used to calm my nerves. But now look at her. I take it you missed the Mother Crystal. I hated her, but she was all I knew. Worked her minds for years. And when she shattered, part of me shattered with her. I had to trade my pickaxe for a rolling pin. 
But I'm no good at baking. Every loaf I touch collapses. My bread's as hollow as I am. She was the only thing that could fill the hole inside me. Oh, I loved her, damn it. But now she's gone. She's never coming back. What am I supposed to do? I ask her. How does a shell of a man learn to live again? Hmm. Hmm. Express yourself. Remember the good times. Focus on your work. Uh, I want to say, like, express yourself. Perhaps you could express yourself in your work. If you miss the fang, maybe you could recapture it somehow. Recapture it? I'm a baker, not a... You know... You might just be right. Yeah, solve the problem. What a fool I've been! I have to get back to the bakery right away. Thank you! Thank you, my friend! You've opened my eyes! How? In what way? What did I do? Wait. <laughs> I can't wait to see what this turns into. What do you mean? You won't be needed. Uh oh. An escort then. In what way did I inspire you? And why am I worried for some reason? Most fragrant herbs and spices. Ah, there you are. The man who lit a fire under my wayward apprentice. <laughs> Though I worry you might have stoked the flames a little too high. He damn near ran me down trying to get to my oven. Master, it's ready. Behold the Drake's Balm. A truly unique creation. Yo, that looks delicious. I dare say it is. <laughs> Just look at it. A perfect likeness of the Fang herself. Her steeple peaks, her fulsome spurs, her inviting hollow. True, my loaves collapse more often than not, but what's the Fang without her crater? Why, no Fang at all. And look, inside. She's filled to bursting with a bounty of beautiful crystals. Salt crystals! Master, I have found my purpose. I must use my work here to preserve the memory of the Fang. Uh, well, if it tastes off as unique as it looks, I'd certainly say you're on to something. <laughs> Uh, not only is my apprentice back, but he's finally pulling his weight. With any luck, I might even have a new delicacy on my hands. I don't know how you did it, but you have my thanks. I don't know how I feel about the uh, salt in the middle of it, but at first I thought it was like apricot or something in there. Like it was a nice pastry, and then the, the, I was like, ooh! But if that's salt, I mean, I guess people love now, salt. Do San, I know you're keen, but do you have to use the good salt? Leave some for the rest of us. Sorry, master. I'll go and get some more later. That man was channeling Anakin Skywalker. It would make us sorry, funny. master. <laughs> All right, that's that's it, I guess, for the side quest at the moment. Okay, let's go back. Feeling real good, feeling real good. Doing a lot of good stuff here today. But more importantly, uh, actually, let's go do this. I might get some rep from it. I don't think, but I might. Blackthorn, can I ask a favor? Hell with it. It's for mid. This is my last chance to say I'm otherwise engaged. And myself, for your sake. Go on then. What is it this time? <laughs> she said you would know. Here. Gregor's Tates. Well, I don't know what the hell you'd want this for, but I can make it. Won't be easy though. And I'll need help. 
Get Gavin Otto in here, will you? All right. So Liz roped us all in here again, has she? Typical. Still, if that's what it takes to get her to visit Sid's grave, I'll do what I can. And, uh, what is it we need to do, exactly? Take a look at this. It's this plating. The usual saw grade steel won't work. We need something that can get very hot, very fast, and still keep its shape. That means an alloy. Something that won't break or buckle at the temperature she's talking about. Which is where you lot come in. I need materials, and I've got my work cut out already. You'll have to fetch them. Now, there's a special kind of sand I'm after that you can only find out in the Valkroy. Stardust, they call it. Okay. As for the rest of the stuff, my usual supply should have it in stock. It just needs buying and bringing back here. Well, we'll get it done quicker if we split up. One of us should probably give you an hand coat in the sand. And the other can go and get the rest from this supplier. Right then. Well, make your minds up who's going where. We can get this over with. Up to you who you tow to the desert. I mean, Gab's good in a fight, but you don't have my winning personality. Ah, don't listen to him. You'll be in the lowest of low company with either of us. You going after the Stardust then, are you? Which one of these two lucky souls is going with you? Hmm, does it matter? I mean, I want all the Gav time, but also I've had zero auto time. I guess we'll go with Gav. Gav, you're with me. All right then. So, uh, where do we find this stardust stuff? There's a river that runs through the southern reaches of the Velcroy. It's the black sand that washes up on its banks that you're after. Southern reaches of the Velcro, eh? That's down past Dallamil. I'll go and scout the place out. See about hiring us a wagon to bring the stuff back to. All right. I'll meet you by the river. While you're off having a paddle, I'll pick up the rest of the stuff from Blackthorn's supplier. Take care. You too, eh? Don't go letting him fleece ya. Fleece me? I'd like to see him dry. In your own time. Okay. Uh -oh. Sounds like this river we're looking for is south of the Dalamil Inn. I'll hire us a wagon and meet you there. Go we'll get us a good price. It's that one you want to worry about. All right. Off we go. Ooh, I did see that I have an updated... Uh item or something there, but let's continue on. How f how far south we going? Oh. Not far south at all. Literally just right around the corner. Oh. And Schubert, like I found the river. I said, Where's Gav? Sorry to keep you, Gav. Better late than never. I've had a quick scout about, and I reckon round here's our best bet if we want to grab as much of this stardust stuff as we can. Don't know what Blackthorn's planning to do with it, though. I asked over in Dalamil, and they seemed to think it was worthless. Nah, 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 he's stardust smart. stardust is what Blackthorn wants, stardust is what he'll get. There's plenty of this stuff lying about just begging to be bagged. Then let's get bagging, shall we? We shall. Race, yeah? Oh, let's do it. Mm. 
So this is Stardust. <laughs> it just looks like black sand to me. It says go over here, but then, oh, okay. It's not necessarily down by the water. Okay, that changes my perspective entirely. I was like, I don't see any down by the water anymore. I do now. I'm starting to think there might be one up here. Yeah. man just jumping for joy that should be enough for now Speaking let's see how jumping. Gav's getting on Gav has been attacked by 18 monsters bandits have waylaid his cart you finished how much did you get enough Might even be enough for all Blackthorn. Hey, uh, before we go, do you mind if we have a chat? About? Feels like ages since we had the chance to talk. You know, man to man like. It does, doesn't it? Back when you first took Sid's name, we were talking all the time. Working out what to do in that. <laughs> there was a lot to work out. And there still is. Those shoulders of yours starting to feel the strain. Hardly ever see around the hideaway nowadays. Always on some errand or other. You can take a day off, you know. Well, says the man who spends most of his time behind enemy lines. Only because you keep sending me there. I know I can count on you, Gav. Likewise. So you keep sending me wherever you need to, and I'll keep going. Safe in the knowledge that I have a home to come back to. Thanks to you. Gav's great. I like Gav a lot. Right. That's enough soppy shite for one day. We'd better get this lot back to Blackthorn before he slings his hammer at someone. You go on ahead. And try to get some rest once you're there. Oh, I plan to. Believe you me. After Blackthorn gets what he needs, of course. Right. Ready to go home, boy? Keep hitting my microphone. I'm so emotional about the friendship between these two boys. 
Um, is there anything? Not really. Just look at these mystery. The Hand of Titan. What is the vibe with this? What does it mean, bro? Let's hope this is all Blackthorn needs. All right, Clive. I gave all that stardust to Blackthorn just like I promised. I got everything Blackthorn asked for. How'd it go over in Dallin? Blackthorn. Got everything you need. Yeah. Yeah, I do. Cheers for the stardust. Should be enough to be getting on with. We should go out on maneuvers together more often. Or be sneaking around on your tod all the time. I'll make a start on putting this thermal plating together then. It will take some time, mind. So if you've got other things to be getting on with, I could do without you breathing down my neck. Thank you, Blackthorn. I'll let Mid know construction's underway. Hey. Okay, so this is a multi, probably three-phase step. <clears throat> As she said, we were, there's, you know, the inside bit, the outside plating, and then the other part that I've forgotten what it did. <laughs> Suppose we'd better be getting back to work, too. Give us a shout if you need anything. some sort of lost boys rope system where I pull on it and it like zips me over to mid's workshop and also the farm down below because they put those way out the way Pleased to hear that Blackthorn started work on the plating. Excellent. One down, two to go. So, what's next? The helm, of course. For this, we'll be repurposing fallen scrap. Salvage from the ruins? I thought that material was all but impossible to work. Ah, but we don't have to. I'm sorry? Just so happens there's one particular ruin that's broken into exactly the right shape and size pieces for what we need. What's the name back there? I'll give you all the details. <laughs> What's her name? Right. If that is her real name, I'm gonna lose my mind. Jan, what's her name? Helena, what's her name? Oh, Sid, is this about the helm? Uh Yes. Mid said I should speak with you. I'll show you the plans then. Here you see the mithril engine in which mithril is burned to generate heat. That heat is then harnessed to produce motive force. Excess heat is dealt with by means of the thermal displacement stack, which disperses it into the surrounding air. Now, were we to rely on thermal plating alone to achieve this effect, the rate of excess heat buildup would far exceed the displacement coefficient of the plating. In other words, the reactor would overheat and eventually explode. This is where the helm comes in. It connects to the plating, you see, and serves as a sort of thermal sink to absorb all that excess energy. Our experiments have shown that fallen ceramics are remarkably thermophilic. They can withstand and absorb levels of heat far above anything we are able to make today. And not only that, they're also waterproof and immune to rust, making them the perfect material for our protective hood. Why, if sea or rainwater were to enter the reactor proper, it would vaporize instantly. 
The forces produced would tear the ship from stern to... You can stop there. <laughs> I understand. Mid said we might be able to use parts of a fallen ruin. Where would I find it? Ah, yes. It's in Lorbert's Pass, near Lostwing. The thing is, well, I probably should have arranged to have the pieces we need brought here sooner. You see, a certain unwanted visitor has taken up residence there. It's no longer a matter of just walking in and taking them. It's, um, going to be considerably more dangerous than that. Okay. I see. Then I suppose I'd better deal with this unwanted visitor for you. Would that help? Oh, very much. Thank you, Sid. I'll gather my team and head there right away. We'll meet you outside the ruins. All right. Landing off steam two. Actually, you know what? Before we head over there, let's go back and see what kind of goodies I got for being such a just such a good person. Helping out, saving the world, you know. The reason why any hero does anything. The sweet rewards. Oh, I wasn't expecting you back so soon. Kuka. I thought that... <sighs> oh. That bastard's death would change things. When I close my eyes. I can still hear Yara's voice as he whispers for us to run. As he calls out to the soldiers to distract them. His words saved us. I'll never forget that. It's just like he said. Words are immortal. And his live on in me. They changed my life and I've wanted to thank him ever Only since. I don't know how. I don't know the right words. I wish you were here. To teach them to me. Come to claim your just desserts. Ability points 800. Many claim they wish to change the world. Few actually take it upon themselves to do so. You're an inspiration to us all. You earned this. Nice. And then next is the fire in our hearts. Oh, that's my renown. Okay. I'm the fire in their hearts. High Cleric's Medallion. Ooh. I need 850 to expand? Best that's going to take a while, there, I think. Unless they just keep giving it to me for being such a good boy. Are you still running around after mid? Oh, you poor bastard. <laughs> Ain't so bad stretching your legs once in a while. Should do it more often. No, oh, you're the telling me. Try playing this game for hours on time. I'm like, I need to get up and move. Okay, so it's in the ruins. Is there a faster way to get to where I need to get to? I'll be taking you all to a storehouse in the bales. Leave it. Ah, so it's just kind of along the way. I actually know exactly where that is. Anything you don't need behind. I was hunting. Uh, I was hunting there before when I was looking for stuff. Can I get there this way? If you're ready, we leave at once. Crazy how much this town changed. I don't think any of the enemies here are worth my time, and I probably should just mount up, but... Not that far away, and if I find anything, I guess that's free XP, right? Yeah, they're level 13. <laughs> Nothing. 
It's nothing. Hello, plants. Team, what? Lady, for some reason you seem so much taller than everyone else, and I thought you were like a banshee or some shit. <laughs> I don't know why I was like. Oh, there you are, Sid. Um, thanks so much for coming. The uh, ruins are just over there. Right, I've run that direction. Creature, I told many you about. Times. I'd imagine. Would you? Uh, would you mind? Nah, I got it. Of course. I'll be right back. Uh, oh, oh. Anybody home? Oh, boy. <laughs> this must be our unwanted visitor. Time to go. Last minute turn, he can kiss my whole butt. Nice try. Alright, we got these things, we got these things, and we got this. Hi. Mister, come on. I do for you, Mid. Sid! Oh, thank goodness you're safe. You shouldn't have any trouble now. Indeed. Well, don't let us keep you. We'll, um, see that everything is transported safely back to the hideaway. All right. I'll let Mid know you're on your way. Hey! All right, that's number two. One more. Eye of the Warrior. Oh, all right. I mean, I don't think I've used those once. I really should. I'll be honest. I really should. Okay, report back to me.
I'm so enamored with the random people in the city who just go, or town, who just go. What's up, dude? Go get him, boss. Recovered the material for the helm. She'll be along shortly. Excellent. Another job well done. And just one remaining. Right. Right. The shielding. This one's a bit of a bugger. How so? The plating's enough to stop the engines going pop, but those things will still be spitting out enough fire to set the rest of the ship ablaze. Which is why you need proper shielding. A prison for the dragon's breath that's blazing away inside. I thought a triple thick layer of tempered steel might do it. Or more of the stuff that the Fallen use, but they'd both be too heavy. The helm and the plating are bulky enough as it is. Add any more weight and the whole ship would be at the bottom of the briny before we'd even started. I need something light. But I've wrapped my brains and I just can't think what I'd do it. Well, if I were in need of obscure knowledge, I know whose counsel I would seek. Harpocrates. Tomes? Yeah, well... I'd thought of that, obviously. I've got all the details written down here. Can you take this to him? See what he makes of it? Right away. Can I get there faster this started way? started reading books that don't have any I guess when you're on the ass end of the ship, town, doesn't matter. Either way is gonna be long. Let's give some breeze. Thanks to Always. Well, actually, it's for mid this time. Could you take a look at this? Hmm. <laughs> Shielding for a mithril engine. Whatever will that girl think of next? And what are these notes around the edges? She has some specific requirements for the materials. The shielding needs to be able to resist extreme heat on the inside, and yet remain cool enough on the outside not to set the ship alight, while also being light enough not to sink it. As you can imagine, she's struggling to find anything that meets her needs. I see. I wondered if you might know of a solution, or if you might be able to search the records for one. Hmm... Perhaps it is not a different material she requires, but a different approach. What do you mean? Consider the lake we have made our home. Its blighted waters eat away far more quickly than fresh water or even brine, at timber and steel alike. And yet, we have made a home here from those very materials nonetheless. We have. But Bardolf must varnish every board twice over to keep it from rotting. An obelisk complains that without a constant supply of... <sighs> pitch. I see. Early Gregorian histories speak of a preparation known as Moondew. It is said to be able to resist even the most ferocious flames. Before the dragoons tamed the worms and wyverns of the realm, nobles would daub their castle walls with it in order to guard against dragonfire. So if we could recreate it... It might be applied to some material or other in order to provide the protection Mid requires. As to how best to apply it and to what material, perhaps Bardolf and Obolus might be of assistance. I shall speak to them and see what wisdom they might have to offer. If you would be so kind as to procure the necessary ingredients, 
I shall discuss the specifics of how it might be most effectively put to use with our two friends. The knowledge of the past may yet prove useful to we of the modern era. This man. Thank you, Hippocrates. And since you're asking others to help you, perhaps I should too. So you need a hand, do you? We do. I'll be heading to market for the ingredients we need. I could do with some help. And some company, too. The other can assist me in researching how best to prepare the shielding itself. Can we count on your aid? Always. Well, if Jill's game. Thank you. I am sure either of these fine young minds would prove indispensable in my research. I leave the decision as to who will go with whom in your capable hands, Clive. I see. So we're gonna get a Gav scene, but with one of these ladies, and here's the thing. Deep in my soul, I kinda wanna go with Tarya. However, I would be a fool not to choose Jill. Right? I kinda wanna see the Tarya vibe, but like, Jill and Clive need a moment. You know what I mean? They just need a moment. Shielding that guards against even the most ferocious flames. We could have done with some of that on Drustinus. I doubt I would have survived that place with or without it. A trip to Northreach, though, I think either of us could handle. So, Clive, have you made your decision? Who will accompany you on your little excursion? Very well. So then, what do we need to find? I have taken the liberty of preparing a list. Here. White chocobo eggs. Pepio nuts. Are you sure this list is right? Everything on here seems very edible. I would have thought the ingredients would be a little more exotic. Though these items may seem mundane, they have potent effects that are rarely exploited. Effects for which they were once highly prized. So much so, in fact, that they were harvested almost to extinction. Hence, moon dews having fallen from favor. Now, of course, they can be obtained with ease. You should be able to find everything you need at the market in Northreach. Is that so? I've been meaning to visit Northreach anyway. I'll set out now. Join me there when you're ready. But we're like, we could go will. together. Until then. <laughs> Just give them a moment. You two enjoy yourselves. I'm trying to. You. Fresh cut. Ah, you'll not find a bruised pippin in the bush. Those papio nuts? You can never tell. How goes the hunt for ingredients? Uh, I've only just started. I'm sure everything we need is somewhere amongst all these stalls, though. Why don't we split up and see? We'll take a couple of ingredients each. All right. What am I looking for? How about you look for the pepio nuts and some garlic? I'll find the other things we need. We can meet by the gate when we're finished. Any friend of the innkeeper is a friend of mine. Garlic, eh? I hope it's to your liking. Good day. How the hell is anyone supposed to afford <sighs> that price? Buy, sell, 
or be gone. Go on. Take it. Oh, hold on. That's everything. Let's see how Jill's getting on. Oi, don't touch anything. Uh, one. If that's what you want. And. And what can I do for you? Fifty thousand. And that. Okay. Thirty-three seconds. Come back again. Give them pilgrims nice and chill. Did you find everything? I did. Here. Garlic and pepio nuts. Perfect. Now all that remains is for Harpocrates to somehow turn all this into what Mid needs to keep her engine cool. But before we head back, would you walk with me a while? Thank you, game. Thank you for asking me to help you today. It makes a nice change. It does. It's good to get away from all the battle and bloodshed for once. Just being here reminds me of when we were children. Do you remember walking down Market Street in Rosalith, taking in the sights and smells? <laughs> how could I forget? What with Torgal's antics? Remember how his nose would prick up at the scent of sausages? He'd go racing away and we'd have to go running after him. We wouldn't catch you now, would we, boy? Oh! Is there anything you wanted to buy for yourself while we're here? There was, yes. Well, sort of. Molly in the kitchens told me about a place that sells particularly good pies. Thought you might like to share one with me. I would. Thank you. And I saw some bread. Big white cobs like the baker back in Rosalith used to make. What do you think? I thought we might get some soup to dip it in. But then I tried a slice of the butcher's dry cured ham and it was just. Oh. You were right. <laughs> Sorry. It's just. Oh, you're right. I really do feel like a child again being here with you. Clive. Is it wrong of me to enjoy this? No, Jill. This is how life should be. And it's how our lives will be when our work is finally done. When we can live on our own terms. I hope so. Thank you, Clive. Well, I suppose we better be getting back. I need to give these ingredients to Harpocrates and Talia. I'll see you at the hideaway. Take care. I will. You too. That was everything I wanted. That was great. I'm glad we got like a scene of the two of them just like being together. Giving me them emotions. More of that, please. I wonder how Hippocrates is getting on with the moon dew.
Welcome back. I hope you two had fun while I was busy helping Harpocrates. We had a great time. We had a good time, but we deserved it. Ah, Clive. Harpocrates has all the ingredients. We were just waiting for you. How's work on the shielding progressing, Harpocrates? Well, very well indeed. And thanks in no small part to your kind assistance. I was just explaining to Taya how we might best go about preparing the Moondew. And now that we have all the ingredients, we may begin. You can count on me. I've mixed more than a few mysterious concoctions in my time. <laughs> I'm sure you have. What about the shielding itself? Work is underway, under the watchful eyes of Bardolf and Obolus. Apparently, it'll be ready soon. Thank you. All of you. Right then. Jill, would you join me in the infirmary? Many hands make light work and all that. Of course. Oh, and Clive, thank you. <laughs> it was nice just being with you. Yo. It appears our work here is almost at an end. A shame. I was enjoying playing the man of action for once. When both the shielding and the moon dew are ready, it will merely be a matter of applying the one to the other. Followed by a rigorous process of testing and retesting, of course. Perhaps someone ought to warn young mid of that. Leave it to me. Thank you, Hippocrates. Hell yes. Okay. Question for old tomes over here. Did any of that help oh, me? I better go and give Mid the good news then. <clears throat> I just wanna... How good it is to see you, Clive. Did I level up? I have compiled some new entries. If you would like to see them. I would. Yes, please. Okay. What subject shall we consider today? Okay. Closer. We're closer than we were. I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna hit that rank five. You best believe. The real question I have is: Are we gonna get one of those infamous Final Fantasy ship reveals where they do the music and everyone's like, "Wow!" and they're riding on it. It looks cool. Started reading books that don't have any pictures in. Think Mid might need some help. Sorry to keep you waiting, Mid. But you'll be pleased to know that work on the shielding is underway. You found something for it. In a manner of speaking, Hippocrates knew of a substance that's highly resistant to heat, a coating that should provide the protection you need. He's supervising the construction and testing of the shielding as we speak. Brilliant! I knew you wouldn't let me down. Don't thank me. I'm just the errand boy. Right then. Better start working out how to bolt all these bits together. To the Black Hammer! You know, when I got into the smithing game, I thought I'd be making swords and shields, not thermal bleeding didgeridoo dars. Displacement stacks. Same difference. Whatever you call it, I ain't putting it together in here. It's cramped enough as it is. Let's take this outside. Mid, you get all the parts lined up on the deck. I'll take care of the rest. On my way. Oh, and bring me the biggest salmon you can find. This is going to require some precision wallabing. <laughs> Comes from some guy called Watts. Tis truly a powerful hammer. Let's 
sometime later. It's finished! It's finally finished! Thank fuck for that. I'll be feeling my hammer arm for weeks. Thank you, Clive, Blackthorn, everyone. That's one down and just three more to go. Girl, what? I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, did I tell you? The Enterprise has four Mithril engines and we'll be needing a displacement stack for each. You don't mean... <laughs> Don't worry. Now they've got a finished one to work off, my gang in Canva can build the rest. Good luck to them, I say. Right, I'm off to get a sling for this elbow. Any other work comes in, keep it to yourselves, eh? <laughs> I had a feeling, I was thinking during this scene, well, where are they going to put this? Is it like a motorboat where it's in the back? But then I remember the image. I was like, wait a minute. This is airship-esque, so it would have to be on the sides. So it checks out. Just very funny. What's the matter? Nothing. Just daydreaming. Thinking about the Enterprise sailing off over the horizon to shores unknown. Searching for a land untouched by the blight. Just like me and my dad planned. So if the worst came to the worst and every scrap of soil in the twins turned black, we might still have a chance. That's what she was meant to be. You see, one last chance just in case we needed it. But now she's so close to being finished, I've realized I don't want her to be that. I don't want her to be just a lifeboat for us to cling to if things get desperate. I want, I want people to sail a border by choice, not from the lack of it. In a world where we're not just trying to survive, but where we can actually live. I'm working on that. And I'll do everything I can to get you what you want. <laughs> Don't you always? All right, my mind's made up. As soon as the Enterprise is fit to sail, I'm putting her under your command. Sod our plans. I'm trusting in yours. Are you sure about this? Something tells me it's what my dad would have wanted. He'd be proud of you. You, um... You were gonna visit his grave, weren't you? I was. And you can come too, now that your little project is finished. Right. There's just one thing I need to finish up first. Won't be a mo. All right. I'll let Otto know you're coming. Meet us in the mess when you're ready. Aye, aye, Captain. Mid told me she was building a ship. Really? That's a ship? <laughs> Let's sail it around the lake. Mm, so now we have... Weird science. Okay. But also reading table stuff. But also, oh my lord. Yes, I've come to collect. How may I help you today, Clive? Your benefactors are a generous lot. Few are those who would strive to lighten the burden borne by the crystals cursed. But if we are to survive the coming storm, we must stand together, bear and brother, as you have shown us. Cool. All yours. Okay. Best of luck oh, out there, Sid. I guess I could go uh, this way. Oh, wait, hold on. We gotta stop in here real quick. It was good of you to help Mid. And it made a nice change for me as well. There's only so many boils a girl can lance before she gets sick of it.
Weird science in here? Weird science. Of course it is. Well, that's it then. I'm bugger. Here, Sid. Reckon you might be just the man to help me out with a bit of bother. If you've a mind to. Let's hear it. <laughs> well, it's about this alembic the chief's got me making. Lovely bit of kit, it is. Bung in a solution you want split in, and it will separate it out, just like that. Problem is, it won't always get rid of all the impurities. And with some of the stuff we need it for, that ain't good enough. Which is why I've been looking for something to filter the liquid we'll be cooking off. And that's where I was hoping you could help me out. Yeah, all right. I imagine Taya could get some use out of this Alembic too. Distilling medicines and the like. All right. Why not? Proper job. So what exactly do you need for this filter? Nothing but bomb ash will do, oh, says the chief. Oh, no. It'd be a sample she'd obtained from the university stores. Couldn't believe my eyes. You pour the blackest blight water through it, and it comes out clear as a mountain stream. So, I did a bit of reading about where I might be able to get hold of some. Cool. And do you know what I found out? No. It's only the blimmin' bones of a bomb king. They leave them behind when they die, see? I take it that's where I come in. <laughs> if you would have mind. Okay, cool. I, I, I saw a billet on the hunt board for one just the other day. Would have gone myself, but, well, fighting dirty great balls of flame isn't exactly my forte. You, on the other hand. All right. I'll see what I can do. Thank you kindly. And, and a good hunting, eh? Oh no, I gotta fight a bomb king? How are we doing? You still obsessed? When it comes to yeah, Bob's right. charm, Goops has an indomitable rival. <laughs> Are you on the hunt for the Bomb King, Koopo? If so, I have a billet that might interest you. Ay, ay, ay. Pearl Chain. Yeah, 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 yeah. Soldier later identify the creatures and all. Okay. For the Imperial Chase took a wrong turn into a nearby wood. Discover ruins of a fallen airship. I think I know where that is. I think. The real question is, is... Carcassary... That's the gate. Gate. That's the town. Royal. It's not the meadows. I, like, have a mental image of where this is. Uh, but I could be very wrong. Imperial Chase, right here, right? This thing. The place where I was like, this is definitely going to be a spot where some shit goes down. No, 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 no. Also, that is the wrong damn direction. Assuming this is 
correct. The raptors. Raptor talking. Like the end of Jurassic Park, where that raptor has like a two minute conversation with the T-Rex. I'll never forget that. That's the craziest thing I've ever seen. It's like the end of Anchorman. And the dog talks to the bear, except it's in a, like, a movie that's not played for comedy. It's wild. Like ball form looked cool as shit, like a devil skull. That thing was awesome. Okay. Look what we have here. Greetings, Your Majesty. Oh, oh, I just walked into it. This guy's just leaving stuff on the ground. Oh, come on, man. What? Oh, my whole war. Have fun. This guy doesn't even have a stagger meter. He just is living his life, huh? Alright, let's switch it up. Oh, hey, mate. Hey, Mike. Yeah, okay, I walked into the fire with that, but it went cool as hell. Oh, I tried to dodge out of the way. What is this? Oh, hell no. Oh, hell no. Oh, hell no. No, not today, Satan. Suck up them haters. Get them all. Get them all in there. Woo! <laughs> That's a good achievement. Bomb Ember. 
All right, let's go. Your reign is over. Now to collect the ash. I should... This looks like the stuff. Let's see if there's any more. That should do it. If a wine needs more than this, he can fetch it himself. Come here, come here. Don't walk away from me. You're getting you're getting hugs, mister. After it. Or food? As good as hugs, as far as I'm concerned. Nate told game. me she was building a ship. It's so, so good. I was talking with a bunch of the voice actors, and I can't remember which one said it. Uh, but they were talking about how it took three years of VO work. Like, from the beginning, they were, they were there helping make the characters and, like, craft the voices and stuff. And, and it show It shows. There, Sid. How's that hunt for the bomb ash going? I have it here. That's the stuff, and plenty of it too. Enough to keep the Olympic bubbling away for a good old while. You're a gent, Sid. Let nothing say otherwise. Right then, let's get this contraption up and running. Telemon Malembic. And it works just like the chief said it would. <sighs> Very impressive. <laughs> Since the man who cut down a burning boulder. Speaking of which, I still haven't returned a favor. There's no need. The good it will do for the hideaway is reward enough. Don't be silly. Why don't you let me take a look at that bag of yours? The one you keep your potions in. This is the greatest question for Verdun. Oh, thank you. What kind of magic? Thank you. Well, we happen to have isolated a substance in our test run of the Alembic that I reckon will make even the toughest lever supple as anything. But we might use it to breathe new life into old boots and the like. Save the hideaway a few, Gil. Ah, I reckon if we slap a bit on your bag, it'll loosen it up enough you to squeeze in a bottle or two more. Hell yes. Well, it can't hurt to try, I suppose. That's the spirit. Leave it with me. I'll only be a mo. Only be a mo. The question is, how much more can I fit? Well, what do you reckon? It certainly feels more of flexible right told you thank you i think no no thank you for supporting mid and the rest of us in our endeavors without you we'd never have been able to discover wonders like that stuff i rubbed on your bag and i'm telling you there's plenty more where that came from okay okay Weird science. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Let's go fill her up. Let's 
Potions four to six. High potions three to four. Strength tonics two to three. This is. Well, I'm out here side questing. Doing it, doing it for, for everyone out there. The kids, the mids, and everyone in between. But mostly for the me's. Wish I could take one of them. up to give some breeze to the chocolate. Hello, I've come to buy. And what can I do for you? If you're gonna buy some, be quick about it. Oh yes, oh yes. You're rubbing me blind, you know. Um let's just it it better I'll be here. You'll not find a better price than that. Nice. You know what? We're celebrating. We're celebrating. This Welcome is a good back, victory. Sid. Let's go. Let's go. As if setting our people free wasn't enough. Good news, everyone. The casks have been liberated. <laughs> it's to Sid. Hey, liberation. Libertad. Casks. Oh, you're not leaving already, are you? Look. I got a feeling it's going to be like, spend a hundred thousand tooth. Oh, wait. Hold on. I'm going to do it, though. I'm going to keep going. I'm just going to keep funneling money into there. One of these days, I'm going to get something. But first. Oh, are these additional qu I've stumbled through the hideaway's ledgers at Otto's behest and might have come across something that might need your attention. Maybe. And by that I mean immediately. You know where I'll be. Yeah, alright. Trouble with the ledgers. Shouldn't he be asking Otto for help? They just took my notes, my lovely letters, and turned them into quests. I... Clive, something ain't right with the hounds of, with that hound of yours. When it pleases, your lordship. Come pay, pay me a visit at the toll. Okay. Add it to the list. What could be wrong with Togo? He seemed well enough when I last saw him. He's buying up potions left and right. Can't believe this is they st my poor beautiful notes. <laughs> hey, cheers for your help, Dragon Blackthorn, out of the dumps the other day. Thing is, I reckon he's gone and throw himself back in, judging by the droop of his jowls lately. So I'm thinking maybe it weren't just the leather what was on his mind. Maybe there's other demons jabbing their pitchforks into his privates. I know you're a busy bloke, but, you know, go find why he's hot and bothered. Great. Yeah, all right. Hopefully it's nothing. But I should speak to Blackthorn just in case. They gave me more quests. They gave me more quests. Mamma mia. I thought, you know, we're going to have a little down time after we defeated Titan. We'll go do some things. I was like, oh, the mid-quest? That seems like... Yeah, okay. Nope, there's more. Mamma mia. Blackthorn, do you have a moment? Not really, no. This won't take long. I just wanted to ask how you're getting on. August was worried about you, and you might still be doubting your craft, even after learning the trick of that cuirass. Is there something else weighing on your mind? Perhaps sharing your thoughts might help. That bastard's like a dog with a bone. Still, you've got a keen eye, I'll give him that. He's just, well, Karen showed me something. Something I've never seen before. And that was? A sword. 
An odd-looking thing with a single edge blade. The metal itself wasn't anything to write home about, but fuck me. The edge on it. You could slice a man clean in two with a weapon like that, and he'd be halfway home before he even realized he'd been cut. So that's what's troubling you. Go on. Nah, no, no, no. Not troubling me exactly. More distracting. Can't stop thinking. How do you get an edge of that sharp? It's driving me mad. And if you knew how to do it, we could arm the curse breakers with even better blades. That's about the size of it, yeah. I'll see what I can find out. Sharper swords are always welcome. And we can't have our master blacksmith being distracted. You're a soft touch, you know that. But I can't say I'm not grateful for it. Good luck, eh? Thank you. Yeah. I want a sharper sword. Let's, Let's see what go. Karen knows about this sword. I got your note. You think something's wrong with Torgal? So you can read. Congratulations. But I didn't say I were wrong with him. I said something weren't right. He's not been eating me treats. He used to love cracking the bones from Molly's boiled brown, but now he won't so much as look at him. I didn't like him. Which is why I'm of a mind that his mind's on somewhere else. You've not been working him too hard, have you? No harder than usual. Is that it, boy? Do you need a rest? What was it you said he was? A frost wolf? That's what the lawsman seems to think. Then maybe this all has something to do with whatever it is that's woken inside him. I suppose things happen different since Rosalith. Perhaps Hippocrates knows something. Instead of everything, you mean? Perhaps. Right, but also... You're looking well, Karen. What do you want? Out with it. I want to know about the sword you showed Blackthorn. Single-edged and extremely sharp. Running around after him again, are you? I suppose I am, yes. But I need to help him find out how to work an edge like that. It's driving him to distraction. Little wonder, I suppose. There's not many like that make it as far as the twins, and those that do go straight into private collections. Which made it nice and easy finding a buyer. Can you tell me who bought it? Where is it now? You think I tell people who my clients are? Suppose you're not likely to go nicking him off me, are you now? Yeah, come on! Fine. If you stop mooning at me like that. Lord Ignax, the man you want. Delmechian bloke. Collects weapons and the like. And he's got more money than sense, which is why he's one of my favourite clients. Reckon he'll still be at the inn in Dallamil, where I left him. Okay. Thank you, Karen. Oh. And he's a touch eccentric. If you take my meaning. I appreciate the warning. Who isn't? I invite many of them to this hideaway. I need to ask you about Torgal. Something's not right with him. He isn't ill, is he? I don't think so. But according to Lady Karen, he seems to have lost his appetite. Which is certainly a new development. She says he's hardly been touching his bones of late, and she believes it may have something to do with what happened at Rosalith Castle. Hmm. I rather think she might be right, though not about his appetite. All canids are instinctively inclined to crack open bones for the rich marrow that resides within. And I see no reason why a frost wolf should be any different. Accordingly, I suspect it is not a lack of appetite that afflicts Torgal, but a surfeit of it. If we assume that his newfound magics require additional nourishment to sustain, it may well be that the bones Lady Karen is accustomed to providing are no longer sufficient. Frost wolves, after all, habitually prey upon far larger animals, whose bones may yield altogether different nutrients. As to where one might find a suitable substitute, some antelopes 
that graze the meadows of eastern Rosaria have been known to grow to a size more than double that of their lesser cousins. I don't recall ever seeing any that large. And little wonder. The oldest and largest such creatures rarely leave the safety of the highlands for fear of predators. The last elder antelope sighting I recall hearing about took place near Cressida, and that was long before the village was abandoned. Even so, it seems like a good place to start. Okay. Good hunting, Clive. I got me running around, but worth it. I imagine the blacksmith's blues is going to lead to some type of new weapon or something, because that is the plus sign. Told me the other she was two, a just ship. good old lore. Clive, did you get my letter? That's why I'm here. Shh. I don't want be listening. <sighs> Is this better? A little. Listen, I have some bad news. It turns out the hideaway may be slightly behind in its payment to certain lenders. And it may be my fault. But I swear to the goddess, I thought I had the numbers square. Sadly, that square turned out to be more of a circle. Zero, you might say. I can straighten it out, I swear, but it's going to take some time. And I'm going to need help keeping it from Otto. Be late for that, I would say. <laughs> there you are. What a surprise. So let me get this straight. You forget to pay our lenders what they're due. And instead of coming straight to me, you get Clive to come to you. And I will dig you out of the hole you've dug for yourself. Clive, the man in charge of the place you've been cheerfully trying to bankrupt. And you thought this was a cunning plan. Why? Well, who needs paying? Oh, just Martha. And the dame. And, well, Lady Karen. But only 500 talents. We owe three of our most trusted friends five million gil. Each. Five million. Each. Uh -huh. They lent us the bulk of the money we used to rebuild the hideaway, you see, and, well, I, I must have made some sort of oversight. <sighs> Those ledgers were my responsibility, and it was my decision to entrust them to you. This is my fault. Do we have that much to hand? I can always ask my uncle. No, we don't. And no, you won't. We've lightened Lord Rosfield's purse enough. After the King's ransom we had off him, he deserves better than to see our begging bowl. Besides, we'll need to learn to stand on our own if we're gonna make this work. All right. But that doesn't mean you have to shoulder the burden yourself. Is there anything I can do to help? There might be. How'd you fancy taking these to Martha and the Dame? Rocks. Rocks. He says, worth a thousand talents apiece, these are. A little something Sid and I set aside for when times got lean. And I reckon 15 million in overdue debt probably qualifies. I just hope our associates' eyes are a bit more discerning than yours. I'm sure they will be. Hmm. Should be me making the rounds, really. But you know how it is with this place. Orders to bark. Asses to wipe and all that. I know. Which is why I don't mind going in your place. Go. Do you know why I only gave Master Clive here two star rubies? Because you'd rather Lady Karen killed me. Because I'd rather Lady Karen killed you. Yes. <laughs> well... Rip. I suppose this is goodbye then. <laughs> Don't worry. 
I'm sure Karen will understand. Really? Do you think so? No. I don't. <laughs> uh, good times. It's making me laugh. Okay, we are done here. But we have got more to do. Go straight to here. Go see the dame. Uh. There's two. Of a glass in. Did you hear? The gates to Heaven Hall in the airy were breached by someone. Or something. The steward was in town earlier looking for men to come and repair it. But no one was keen to help. I want to see you again tonight. But the captain's late with our pay. It's all right. I'll be waiting. was there were great coin sacks swinging from every belt in town. Not anymore. Since the capital moved, they're all shriveled to the size of peas. Seeing as business is scarce these days, the dame decided we should all learn to read. Huh. I only wish she had some smaller books. My arms ache something fierce. What am I going to do without sweet water and oil of talc? Still no caravan from the Dominion's perfumeries yet, then. Milady, I come bearing gifts. Gifts? Whatever is the occasion. Oh, my. Clive, you really have outdone yourself. Otto asked me to give it to you, to settle the hideaway's debt with the veil, and to compensate you for the time it took us to do so. Oh, you disappoint me, Clive. I thought you might finally be warming to me. Tell Otto he can keep his baubles. I tried to tell him as much the first time around. The man owes me nothing, nor does the hideaway. My contribution to the restoration effort was made freely and willingly. It was the least I could do. You once told me Sid did you a kindness. I'd like to do the same. Please, accept it. For my sake. And for Otto's. For all of us. For all you've done. <sighs> it is rather fetching, isn't it? Very well. <laughs> Otto is lucky to have you, Clive. I doubt anything could ever replace his son. Mm. But you and the others at the hideaway are the closest thing he has to family. Otto had a son. Long ago, yes. Sid told me Otto lost him when he was just a boy and blamed himself for not being able to stop it. I don't know how it happened, whether there was anything he could have done, but it was clear that it weighed heavily on him. I didn't know. How could you have? I doubt anyone did. Besides Sid, I've never met a man more keen to bear his sorrows in stoic silence. An ill habit given that both have always been surrounded by friends desperate to help them. <laughs> I'm beginning to see that. I wonder if he would have opened up to me if we had gone on that mission together. Would this dialogue have been different too? I don't know. Let's go... We'll save that. Let's go here. Oh. 
People take notice of wealthy men. Shouldn't be too hard to track down Karen's collector. Back again, are you? Any more trouble and you'll be barbed for life, however deep your friend's pockets might be. It wasn't my the fault. Drake's fang is gone. The whole Mother Crystal gone. What are we going to do? Here, calm yourself. Here. Listen, I, I've got this theory. The Fallen. I don't think they all fell. Some of them are still living among us. You could be one of them. I may be, bro. I, I don't know. Could be one of them. Maybe. But he's on to something. Welcome. If you're hoping for a bed, I'm afraid you'll have to look elsewhere. One of our wealthy patrons has purchased the use of every room, hoping to keep out the riffraff. Good. As he puts it. Good. Oop. My reputation will be ruined. Ruined. Calm yourself, Lord Ignac, I beg of you, before you do yourself a mischief. Pardon the intrusion, but... Out! Get out! I paid for these rooms so I wouldn't be disturbed. Leave me be! Please, allow me to apologize. His lordship is going through a difficult time, and he's never been fond of guests arriving unannounced. Radim! Get rid of the filthy oaf this instant! Very good, Lord Ignac. Would you this mind stepping name. outside for a moment? I'm sorry if I've caused you any trouble. That? No, no, no. That's just how his lordship is. Though the morning's events have left him somewhat fractious. He has been dispossessed of his luggage, you see. The thieves also made away with a considerable amount of coin. Coin the innkeeper will soon be keen to collect. I don't suppose a certain blade was among the stolen items. A single-edged sword. It was purchased from a merchant friend of mine. Ah, you know Lady Karen. Yes, I'm afraid it was. Then I'll retrieve Lord Ignac's luggage. But I have one condition. You have but to state it. You are welcome to anything that is within my power to grant. I want an audience with Lord Ignac. A few minutes should be enough. Then I'll be on my way. A condition I would be a fool to refuse. Of course, you shall have your audience. I don't suppose you saw where the thieves went? I did not. No. Though some discreet inquiries made on his lordship's behalf mean that I know where you might find them. The bandit's bed. Every ill-gotten coin in Dalamal is said to pass through that disreputable corner of the Valcroy. And that's where I'm heading. I shall speak to Lord Ignac in your absence, and arrange for an audience upon your triumphant return. That will be very kind of you. Farewell. And best of luck. I think I know where this location is. Though it's up there. Okay, well, I think I know where this location is. Ready, go. Faster. They put this damn thing on the other side of the zone. All right, that's fine. Nothing a good chocobo gallop won't solve, but still far away. <laughs> It's still way over there. And scorpions. Oh, that's not the scorpion one. Hold on. One of these is.
Hello, bandits. We've got company. Come on, lads, let's tear the bastard's head off. Alright. You know what? I'm gonna do this. Let him swing on me. Oh, wrong damn ability. Okay. A lot of mistakes made. Ow. get like too I'm like caught up in the follow-up. That's the reason why I like suck at Dark Souls games. Because I'm like always really trying to attack and do like eight different buttons. And it doesn't register my dodge. It's always been a problem for me. And even though this is like not really similar, I'm still doing the exact same goof. See? The exact same goofery. I'm hurt Toko. That guy's death whale. <laughs> that's it. That's a. This must be Ignac's luggage. Nothing seems to be damaged. All right. Let's get it back to Delamel. How? How? How are we doing that? I put it in my new knapsack with that supple leather. Fit anything in there. I hear I have you to thank for the return of my effects. What shall I call you, my good man? Wyvern. Glad to make your acquaintance. A formidable name indeed. Well, Wyvern, I appear to be in your debt. Redeem here tells me you wished for an audience. Is that all? A few moments of your time should suffice, yes. You're a peculiar fellow, Wyvern. All right, speak. A master Wyvern was wondering if you could tell him about a certain single-edged sword you recently acquired. Oh, a true work of art, that one. Karen drove me hard on the price, but I would have sold her Radim here to get my hands on that sword. It was made in the Outer Isles, far beyond the Twins. Interesting. And is used exclusively by the practitioners of a unique school of swordsmanship. They believe no combat should ever exceed a single strike and okay. hone their blades to such perfection that none ever does. Each sword is made for that one perfect stroke, and for that stroke only. They crack upon a second blow. There's a brutal sort of beauty to it, really. But how did they hone such an edge? Ha <laughs> fine question. Why, they use a whetstone, of course. Whetstones, rather. A whole array of them, ranging from the coarse to the fine. 10,000 licks with the sharpening stone, then 10,000 more. 
but it is the final stone which lends the blade its legendary sharpness. A mineral quite foreign to this great realm of ours. And that is the key. The secret ingredient. Okay. Why, when it occurs to me that my little lecture is hardly equal to services rendered, take this, together with my regards. The very stone of which I spoke, far rarer among collectors than even the blade itself, and a far more fitting payment. Thank you. Pardon the intrusion, my lordship. However, it is long past time we prepared ourselves to depart. So it is. I am locked in bitter competition with a rival collector of curiosities. I am one step ahead of the unscrupulous scoundrel, but he is hard at my heels. Are there are many other collectors out there. Too many to count, but only one do I consider my nemesis. Lord Byron Rosfield. Well, of course. And is a perennial thorn in my side. <laughs> I can imagine. Farewell, Wyvern. May our paths cross again. Radim, we mustn't dawdle. I think his lordship is rather taken with you, Master Wyvern. Thank you again for your assistance. Coming, my lordship. I'll be right there. Uh. Trust Uncle Byron to find such an interesting rival. Now, let's see what Blackthorn makes of this whetstone, shall we? Cool. Very cool. Alright, so it looks like in this big world of ours that beyond the twins... Somewhere, either way over there or way over wait, there, whatever direction my head is going, there's sort of a Japan analog, right? And they mentioned there's other places as well. So, much bigger than, than the world we're seeing. Okay, so I, I made a cut there because someone was knocking at the door. It happens. There are times in this series where I've had to cut because i got to do stuff. But uh, this time... It's really worth it. So, got the door, delivery guy, big package. I was like, what the, what the hell is this? Very light, had no clue what it was. Opened it up, and a little snoot was staring at me. And I looked at it, and it said, from Square Enix. And this is what I just got in the mail. Look how big this boy is. <laughs> He's huge. It is a full-ass Torgal. Look at my sweet boy. Oh my god, I'm so excited. And we're going to do a mission for him? Oh, I love him. I love him so much. <laughs> Go over there, Torgal. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's continue, shall we? I am so jazzed about that. <laughs> oh, goodness. I have a giant Torgal now. <laughs> I think that might be one of the ones you can buy. I'm not, I, I honestly don't know. It's been exactly five minutes since I opened up the package. I haven't looked. I was like, oh, I gotta show the internet. So that's, that's what I did. Clive, we weren't expecting you. I wasn't expecting to be here, but it seems we still owe you a considerable amount of coin for your help with our rebuilding efforts. And though I doubt it's what you were expecting, we were hoping you'd take this as payment. A star, Ruby? I can't accept this. It's worth at least twice what you owe me. More if you can find yourself the right buyer. Think of the difference as interest. Interest? If word got out I charged that much, no one would ever borrow from me again. Anyway, 
Why are you the one here asking me about this? I'd have expected Arto. Bit much sending the Lord Marquis out to sell your debts, isn't it? The old goat working himself to death again. Something like that. Most days I think he's the only reason the hideaway's still standing. Same as always, eh? Back when the place was nothing but a twinkle in the eye of a recently retired Lord Commander, word is he was the first one Sid reached out to. Probably knew that without his strong arm and level head, the idea would never get off the ground. Sid may have been the face of the hideaway, but Otto's always been the backbone. And when Sid passed away, we were all worried that would be the end of it. That Otto would just give up. His death was hard on everyone. But it must have hit Otto hardest of all. But he didn't give up, did he? Quite the opposite, in fact. If I recall, he was the one who nominated you as Sid's replacement. And rallied the rest around you. I reckon what he saw in Sid, he saw in you too. And don't we all? Doesn't hurt that you're half as stubborn and twice as handsome, neither. That, and you keep good company. <laughs> I suppose I do. Gobel wants to know the stones were delivered. If he's still with us. Okay, so we gotta get way over there, huh? All right. Let's go. Run like the wind. I actually love that it points you in the direction of not town, you know what I mean? Well, you didn't need to do that. Clearly I was faced the wrong way, but it pointed me straight and true, it did. Wrong thing. You hungry toggle. Pummeled that guy out of reality. Oh, come on, fellas, boys, not like this. All right, you know what? Sometimes in life, you just gotta kill the old fashioned way. Get him, Torgals! Never not ridiculous. Flipping something so big. He just goes like Broom! Like I'm making flapjacks. No. Will it be enough, I wonder? <laughs> <laughs> I say that answers my question, which means we owe the lawsmen our thanks. You're just a big puppy, aren't you? A very big puppy. 
Oh, <laughs> Torgal. You do know you can take that with you, Torgal. Lady Karen will be relieved to hear you've got your appetite back. Come on, boy. Hey. Nice. Okay, let's head on back. Told me she was building a ship. Goat. Still alive, I see. So Lady Karen accepted the ruby. Ah. Oh, about that. Uh, I tried my best. But she was just too stubborn to take it. She threw it right back in my face, in fact, and told me I could stick my stupid stone where the sun don't shine. Karen refused payment. I hope it wasn't something I said. I'm sure you're as tactful as ever. Let me see what I can do. Oh, wonderful. I hope you have better luck than I did. Lady Karen, Goad tells me you weren't happy with our offer. Would you prefer the debt was repaid in coin? What debt? I don't recall lending any of you like me hard-earned gill. I may have tossed a talent or two in the Hardaway's coffers, but those were donations, and you can hardly call it charity if you go asking for it back. Of course not. But one good turn deserves another, and our circumstances have changed. Surely you wouldn't shun the gratitude of a pauper who happened to have become a prince. Oh, so you're a prince now, are you? <laughs> Fine. But I'm selling it and taking what I'm owed, then you're getting the rest whether you like it or not. Where'd you even get this? A decent trader might nab a thousand talents for a star ruby. A canny one, meanwhile, might claim it were nicked from the belt of Sid the Outlaw himself and ask twice as much. <laughs> might be I already have a buyer in mind. Might be you even know her. The fine continental maid whose beauty is only eclipsed by a guile in commerce. You wouldn't mind, would you? Not at all. Just be sure to tell her that it's always a pleasure doing business. I hear you ended up delivering all three stones. Thanks to this lump. I sometimes wonder what I pay you for. Speaking of which, I, uh... I, I, I still haven't been paid last month's wages. Oh! So you remember what's owed to you, then? Get your ass beyond that disc of yours and don't get up before those ledgers are square. Right away! I've seen that before. Yeah, yeah. Plenty of times. It was the only goblet Sid ever used. Either out of habit, or because the filthy soul couldn't be bothered to find a clean one. I knew so little about him. Like most people. Martha and the Dame both seem to have fond memories of him. Huh. <laughs> I bet they do. How long did you know Sid before he... Before he died. Twenty summers, give or take. Back in the day, I was a purser on a trade ship. Which is where I met him. He bought passage to... I oh, forget where. And having nothing better to do on the long nights, we set up drinking island rum till the morning bell dragged me back to my duties. 
quit my post not long after that. On account of making a fine maiden's belly fat. But me and Sid stayed close. Promising we'd one day sail the seas again. That was... Before fate stepped in. And said she was having none of it. The magic woke inside my son soon after his first name day. And there was no hiding his knack. Couldn't you and your family have... My family were the ones who summoned the constable. Only the monster taken away. I couldn't turn my back on him. Forget what I felt. And I couldn't for the life of me understand how they could. Luckily, Sid was of the same mind as me. It was him who stood beside me when all I wanted was to tear the whole world down. Him who cried for me when I had no tears left of my own. Him who swore he'd do everything he could to stop it from happening again. And he was true to his word, too. Left the Royal Army once and for all. His ranks, his ribbons, gone. Just like that. Threw away everything he had. All to right a wrong that no one else had the courage to face. I knew then I'd follow that man to the ends of the earth. was always too clever for his own good, was Sid. Saw the world for what it really was, while the rest of us were content to go along with the lie we were shown. And it can't have been easy, bearing that burden alone. But he didn't let it stop him. He never lost faith in what he believed was right. And that gave us faith in him. Faith he'd steer us true. So I swore to myself that I'd always be right behind him, ready to catch the stubborn sod if ever he should fall. But I couldn't even do that. Ignore me, just the ramblings of a tired old man. Leave that lot. I'll tidy it up in a bit. This. This is Sid's handwriting. Dear Otto, I may be drunk, but I wanted you to know this place would be fucked without you. Love you, you old grumpy old sod. This note. Hmm? What about it? Sid was right. Without you, we all be lost. You should have bloody well said so then. Just once. Before he went. <laughs> but then, why would he? Him, or anyone? I'd only have told him to piss off. You're wrong, though. Both of you. It was never just me keeping the hideaway afloat. It was all of us. I just shoved people in the right direction, 
Uh, barely seem to be able to do that anymore. Would you rather go with the helm? <laughs> well, maybe I've got a few more years left in me. <laughs> I'm going to hold you to that, Otto. Before you go, Sid would have wanted you to have this. But that? This will do me just fine. Thanks for the ray of sunshine. I'll see if I can't pay you back. Already have. That was great. That was beautiful. Told me she was building a ship. Is that Very touching. Times helped? Me. I noticed you and Toga had gone off somewhere. Took him for a walk, did you? <laughs> you could say that. So, Molly's leftovers weren't good enough, eh? That'll teach me for treating you like you're still a pup. <coughs> all right, all right, no need to shout. Now we know what you're after, I can see about getting some in. Speaking of which, I brought one for later. Can I leave it with you? You can, eh? I'm nice like that. <laughs> In return, you can thank Tomes for me. The bloody know it all. I was just on my way to see him. I'm nice like that. <laughs> oh. Ah, Clive. Were you able to locate your quarry? We were indeed, Lawsman. You pointed us in exactly the right direction. And Torgal's been a very happy hound ever since. Very good, very good. Lady Karen sends her thanks, by the way, for your part in solving the mystery. Ah. But that reminds me. After your last visit, I found myself pondering Torgal's talents. Go on. Do you recall our conversation concerning Lady Jill's role in Torgal's transformation? About how she somehow woke the power within him? Precisely that. A reasonable conclusion, I thought. But one which raised certain questions in my mind. You see, the Fenrir of legend served Shiva and Shiva alone. And while the powers attributed to him are certainly impressive, the records imply they are somewhat different in nature to those you described Torgal as having used. What are you suggesting? That Torgal may be the beneficiary of more than one icon's power. Consider that in addition to Lady Jill, he has served as a loyal companion to you, your brother, and even the late Sid. In short, the icons hitherto near at hand, or should I say at poor, have been diverse and plenty, and that number has only grown as the realm's dominance have fallen to your sword. One can but speculate as to how all of this has affected Torgal. He has seemed more fierce of late. And if I'm not mistaken, he will grow fiercer still. We are fortunate indeed to be able to count him amongst our allies and not our adversaries. <laughs> oh. He's more than an ally. 
He's a friend. Oh, he's the best. Hell yes. The puppy of light. Let's go. Uh oh, I didn't. I clicked on that too fast. What did it? What did I get? See when. Uh, oh. Okay, so slightly increases Torgal's attack proficiency. Well, I would need to, I don't know, use Torgal way more. But okay. And then potentially a brand new weapon, fingers crossed. Sorry for the wait, but hopefully you'll agree it was worth it. You learned something about our sword then? I did better than that. I... a whetstone? Yes. But not one you'll find anywhere in Valestia. Finish on the grinding wheel. <laughs> One hit and all done, eh? Might not be so bad if all you ever fought were duels. <sighs> good luck on the battlefield. Your second opponent would be your last, no matter how good you were. Even so, is there some way it could be used to give the curse breakers an edge? I think so, yeah. With this whetstone and the right kind of steel, I could probably even make a twin of the blade that rattled me. But there'd be no replacing this little rock once I worn it down to a sliver. I reckon we get a dozen swords from it, if that. Swords that the Curse Breakers wouldn't know how to wield, probably. And that would see them through a single fire piece. Nah. No point trying to copy that thing. Be about as much use as a wax anvil. But finishing our blades with a whetstone is fine. Now that's something to consider. And what's finer than fallen masonry, eh? Oh boy. Or more hard wearing, for that matter. Oh boy. Just imagine it. Good Valisthean steel with an edge as sharp as any found in the Outer Isles. I won't make a copy now. Nah. I'll make something much better. I'm sure the Curse Breakers will be delighted. Just don't push yourself too hard. <laughs> don't you worry about me, sunshine. I'll be working day and night since I was half your age, and I'll still be here when you're long gone. <laughs> hey, thanks, Clive. I mean it. I owe you one, August 2. It's good to know someone's looking out for me. You'll be happy to hear you said that. And I'll see that my debt to you's paid. First new blade I make's got your name on it. You come and find me when you've got the materials. Ooh. Right? I will. Cool. I like how the side quests I'm doing are for friends and not just like random NPCs. So there, it actually feels like they're Excalibur. It actually feels like there's some weight behind what I'm doing. And it like means something, even though it's like run over here and kill this one guy and then run back to me. It actually like means something. Excalibur, eh? What do I need for this? What do you need? I don't know. Probably to go kill a bunch of so hunts. Be. Ay, ay, ay. Grind stone. Nope, that's less than what I have. Excalibur. That's what I need. Grimalkin hide? One whole Grimalkin hide. Ooh, boy. The hell is a Grimalkin? <laughs> that it? Okay. Fine. Hold on, Otto. I need to go for Actually, I'm gonna go hunt this thing. Well, don't just stand there gawping. Go on, then. Okay. We'll max it out. Rubbing me blind, you know. Yeah, I know. I'm aware. Come again. Oh, don't. I'm not much bothered either way. Rimmelkin? 
kin of a Grimmel? Oi. You told me she was building a ship. Okay, alright, okay. What do you want to know about them Grimmels? I don't, I don't know. Ooh. Did I ever tell you about the time I took a trip to the islands west of Storm? No. You mean the Iron Kingdom. Is that what you call them, Koopo? In Moogle Tongue, we call them the Smitties. And the strait that separates... Oh, never mind. I was adventuring down Damilkin Coast when I saw bright lights and black shadows. Oh, no, I'm going too slow. Imagine my disappointment when I learned that the lights and shadows weren't busy with his lands on the blighted rocks. Nope. Okay, still from there, I learned the local traits and strangers, Koopo. It is probably the best. It is, it is okay. <laughs> nice conversation, pal. Okay, so we got Soul Stingers, Grimmelkin. Here we go. Here we go. Just off the sickle, the road that leads from Dalmo to the Jaw. The road that leads from Dalmo to the Jaw. <sighs> so if I just backtrack, in theory. All right, so there's just a lot of dudes in this area hanging around. Ah, right there. Might as well come over here and get my shit. Hello, Helldiver! Like this. Three desert ro Desert Rose! Is that a song? I feel like that's a song. Or an always sunny in Philadelphia joke. Where's that path? Still further ahead. Okay. Uh, are you goons? Nope, just guys. A mountain of a monster, twice as tall as Titan himself, cracked the fang open like it was a sparrow's egg. I what? swear on my grandmother's grave. I believe you. I believe you. This means that this path up here is finally open. Somewhere around here is this dude. Uh oh. Hello! Those of you are there. Okay, well, we got we got all sorts of directions to go. I'm going to make the wild assumption it's this way. But first, I want to go grab this. Although, 
I could be wrong. Could be over in the actual fields. We'll see. We'll see. We got hounds. <laughs> Finished. Yeah. My pupper alone. Side thing over here, huh? Ooh, I like this side thing. One. Tahu. Tahu. Piles of kill. That's it, huh? I guess a hondo is a hondo. This certainly wasn't the the way, but I didn't find this, and that's a thing. Nope, it was the way. It was the way. Nope, it was the way. Okay. All right. Great. I got a whole bunch of guys down here. Let's just... Playtime for the pack, is it? Let me introduce you to mine. <laughs> oh shit! Oh shit! Just gonna let that get handled. So many. Okay, well. Soil and stone. Nice. Oh, okay. All right, Mister. All right. I got a hit for you, you son of a bitch. Okay, alright. 
All right, enough of this garbage, you son of a bitch. Fingers forgot where they were supposed to be pressing. I pressed over. I healed myself for some reason. Sure. <sighs> that wasn't too bad, was it, Toggle? <laughs> He's doing fine. Okay, well, we did that. And now we head back and I craft Excalibur. Go on. Very excited for this. Dave. Sir, so would it be? I would like to craft one Excalibur, please. It last you a good while. Nice. Is that it. <clears throat> Fine. Ooh, look at this sword. Okay. He cracked the crystal too. the other day I'll have you know I ain't never shed a tear in front of no one not even my mother and you won't soon catch me doing the like again so if it please your lordship we can both forget about the whole damn thing the Sid I chose to follow all them years ago is gone and there ain't no dragging him back from the depths of whatever hell he's talked his way into but his legacy that lives on in you and everyone else here at the hideaway Sure as the sky is blue. At least, I think it's still blue. <laughs> and as long as it is, I'll be right here where you can count on me. Oh. Very sweet. And the cup is now here. This music is gonna make me sad. <laughs> I'm miraculously undamaged in the attack on the old hideaway. Otto held on to this featureless clay cup to remind him of his lost friend before giving it to Clive, knowing that Sid would have wanted the proud bearer of his legacy to have it. There's so much more though. I feel like I've just cracked the surface on, like. I just feel like there's a lot more to go. Mid told me she was building hey, a so <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Clive. Asterix. Mid finished sending half the hideaway tropes in across the twins, has she? I swear, that girl do anything to put off visiting her old dad's grave. No excuses now, though, eh? Not quite. She said there was one final thing she had to take care of. I'm sure she'll be finished soon enough. She said that. In those words. She 
did, yes. Clive. Were you born yesterday or something? There is no thing. She'll probably be halfway to Canva by now. Oh, mid. I might still be able to catch her. This girl. Overless. Have you seen Mid? Yep. In a boat. Going that way. <sighs> then I'm too late. Mm, you in a hurry at all, are ya? Oh, I offered to take her across, but she wouldn't wait. Just paid for a dinghy and rowed off. Oars going like the clappers. <laughs> Got some life in her, ain't she? But anyway, I was on my way up to see you, as it happens. Got a letter for you. Urgent, by the sound of it. One of your uncle's men said I was to hand it to you in person, post-bleeding haste. And you're here now. Thank you, Oberleth. Don't mention it. What tidings, uncle? My dear boy, my journey to Canva has been a resounding success. The friend I mentioned not only agreed to share the contents of his strongbox with us, but his considerable knowledge of the goings-on in the free cities, by which I learned of the endeavors of a certain young friend of yours. Though, I for one uh, believe Miss Telemon's project to be quite the valiant enterprise, I doubt the... Canaverian authorities will take kindly to the unauthorized use of its dry docks, uh, no matter how deserted. And if rumor has already reached my friend, it may not be long before the guildmasters are rapping at your door, our door even. Which is why I pen this, uh, pen you this note. I would like to borrow your man Gav for a moon or two, that he might keep watch on those who might mean our little fellowship ill and warn us of any impending attack. I trust that you will give this proposal your full consideration, your loving uncle. Troubling Canva. Well, I'll need someone to keep an eye on mid. So what? Mid got us to do all the dirty work and then just sailed off into the sunset? Pretty much. It, uh, seems that way. Well, nothing we can do about it now. But next time you plan on visiting Sid, you might want to tie her to something before you suggest it. Ah, oh, don't be so hard on her. Gotta admit, the dirty work was kind of fun. Everyone pitching in, all that yeah. bollocks. Yeah. Just like when we built this place. <laughs> You're right. Anyway, we all set to head to the old hideaway. I could do with getting to Canva pretty sharpish. Wouldn't do to keep Lord Rosfield of the Seven High Houses waiting now, would it? Not after he asked for me personally. Gav will be leaving with me. Will you mind the place while we're gone? You can count on me. Just be sure to give Sid and the others my regards. All right. Oh, by the way, Jill will be joining us too. She's got some things to take care of, but she'll meet us there. I hope she's telling the truth at least. <laughs> Course, she loves being around you, dude. Sid, I remember what you told me. But if no one is listening to what you have to say, you may as well not say it.
But I will say this, old friend. Hugo Cooker is gone. His shadow looms over us no longer. It's a pity the Phoenix can't be in two places at once. If he'd have been with us, maybe he could have done something for the lost. Not even the Phoenix can bring people back from the dead. Life has a beginning and an end. So we must live while we have the chance. as slaves to the crystals, but as free men. May we join you? Lady Karen, what a pleasant surprise. I thought I'd drop by and see how you were all doing before heading off to restock my supplies. It wasn't the most scenic view back then, but it were never as bad as this. I know. The blight marches on. And soon, there will be no escaping sights like these. So our mission remains unchanged. We cannot stop until every Mother Crystal is gone, and their thirst for ether with them. The only one that remains in Storm is Drake's tail in the Crystalline Dominion. Our next target. We're going to Twinside. It's the capital of the Empire these days. I wouldn't like to think how tightly guarded they've got the place. Not that that'll stop you. But we do well to scout it out before you go charging in. We would indeed. If you're off to the Dominion, you can take this great lump with you. <laughs> Good. Oh, I am sorry. Have you forgotten you're the most wanted man in the Twins? I thought you might like to disguise yourselves as the attendants of a travelling trader. Assuming you've no better ideas. You wanted to buy yourself some tools, didn't you? Well, now's your chance. <laughs> You're letting me go with them. Oh, thanks, <laughs> none. Stop that, you break me bones, you great galoot. <laughs> There's a caravan that runs back and forth between the Dominion and the Boklad markets. It's managed by the Merchants Guild. Just show them Goots' traders pass, and you'll be on your way. It'll be a damn sight less risky than footing it the length of the Crystal Road. That's for sure. Thank you, Karen. And glad to have you with us, Goots. Oh, oh, okay then. I'll get me things, and I'll meet yous there. See yous down in Buck, lad. Get off! Me poor fingers! <laughs> <laughs> Jill, you're with me. Understood. And Gav? Already on my way, Captain. Be careful. Aren't I always? Look at this team! Look at this team! Do you see that, Sid? Your protege is making a proper little outlaw of himself. Oh boy. 
So this, this isn't the bit that was down. So there's like a hole. Oh, maybe they connect. Maybe they'll like connect somewhere in here. Maybe. I I don't know. 